Right now, it's Bart Ehrman. He is the author of The Triumph of Christianity, How a Forbidden Religion Swept the World. Christianity could have easily become a forgotten sect of Judaism, but instead it it spread at a mind-boggling pace, converting some 30 million people in just four centuries. Wow, that's a lot of people. It's crazy. That's better than Joel Osteen. And that's before the internet. (laughs) And before the internet. How? How did that happen? Bart Ehrman uh, has turned this question over in his head for 30 years, and the triumph of Christianity is the culmination of his work to answer it. Uh, His uh, newest book combines deep knowledge and meticulous research in an eye-opening, immensely readable narrative that upends the way we think about the single most important cultural transformation our world has ever seen, one that revolutionized art, music, literature, philosophy, ethics, economics, and law. Uh, Bart is the uh, author of more than 20 books, including the New York Times bestselling Misquoting Jesus and God's Problem. Uh, Ehrman is uh, the James A. Gray Distinguished Professor of Religious Studies at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. Bart, um, you have been on numerous shows, Dateline NBC, The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, CNN, The History Channel, NPR's Fresh Air, so many different, uh, featured in Time Magazine. What comes along with that kind of recognition that you don't like? <laughs> well, some considerable hate mail. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there there are some some people who have very uh, conservative religious views who uh, don't want to hear what historians have to say about uh, about the New Testament or the historical Jesus or early Christianity, and uh, sometimes they get upset. So can you give me an example of the number one thing that you have said or written that has ticked people off the most? <laughs> well, it's actually kind of funny because um, I, I probably have actually gotten mo- uh, the, the, the most hate mail from people who are extreme atheists who get very upset when I say that I think Jesus really existed. Uh, wow. This is something that drives them crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's... Uh, uh, they don't like that, but I think I think conservative Christians uh, find it upsetting when, when I argue that um, there are discrepancies in the New Testament or contradictions or historical mistakes, uh, or when I argue that um, it's impossible to prove that Jesus was raised from the dead. Um, there are Christians who who get upset with that. But you think? My, <laughs> yeah. Well, but my my view is that that's a matter of faith and it's not a matter of proof, and uh, but they want to be able to prove it. Right. And uh, so I, I just argue, no, you can't prove it. You got, you can believe it if you want, but there's no way you're going to prove it historically. Bart, I had about uh, three or four separate people from around the globe email me telling me about your new book. I didn't have to go online and creep on you. My listeners told me about you. And they said, you got to get him back. I love when he's on your show. So that's why you're back, because my listeners are just, uh, just, just they're fans. Like, you have fans, Bart. That's weird. <laughs> Well, it's not that weird. People do have fans. And, uh, yeah, well, you know, the thing is, you know, a lot of the things that I talk about are um, a lot of what I talk about is is not new information for a lot of scholars, but scholars have done a terrible job telling regular people what it is that they've discovered. Mm -hmm. And uh, my my books for popular audiences tend to be the sort of thing where I I spill the beans. And uh, people don't, you know, some people don't like that. uh, And, and, but, you know, I'm, I'm, that's just the way it is. I mean, historical scholars have come to certain kinds of conclusions, and it's important for people to know what those conclusions are. Okay, there's a there's a, a phrase here that uh, basically, you know, Christianity took over the Roman Empire. And when I think about that, I think, really? Took over the Roman Empire? Come on. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Yes, it did. Uh, because, I mean, the, the Roman emperors became Christian, and they started passing Christian legislation, and they started making the empire Christian. Uh, this, um, the thing is, you know, we, we live in a world where we have a separation of church and state, and so we don't think of the government as a religious institution. Um, but in the ancient world, and for millennia, for, I mean, always, uh, Church and state were never separated. The the uh, even in the pagan world, when when the Roman Empire was completely pagan, it was understood that the pagan gods had made the Roman Empire great, and so the empire sponsored the worship of the gods, and they were they were hand in glove. They weren't separate entities. And then when the empire became Christian, well, it became a Christian empire, and it, it completely revolutionized everything—not just religion, but politics and society and culture and everything else. 
Okay, if the stuff you say about Jesus that a lot of Christians believe is true, but you say it's not true, uh, you know, there's, in other words, there's holes in uh, in a lot of the, maybe what the evangelicals especially might say, um, then then why, if there's so many holes, why did this thing take over? Well, you know, people in the ancient world were not modern historians. It's not that they were investigating the Gospels to see if there might be discrepancies and contradictions in them. They were, it, it, it was completely, it was completely different. But, what the Christians were what the Christians were claiming was that all of the Roman religions were wrong. Uh, all of the Roman religions were polytheistic, worshiping many gods, and the Christians said, "No, there's only one God, and if you worship any of the other gods, you're not only wrong, but you're going to pay an eternal price for that." And eventually, uh, they convinced people. Uh, and what I argue in the book is they didn't have to convince thousands of people at one time. They, they convinced one person at a time. And over, over a long period, if you're the only religion saying that you're right and everyone else is wrong, then when you convert people, you convert them away from traditional religions to Christianity. And so every time Christianity grows, pagan religions shrink. And over three or four hundred years, that, that leads to the takeover of the empire. It's interesting. I think it's kind of the opposite these days. These days, if any religion says that they're right and everyone else is wrong, then they're the one that's wrong. Um, <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. But, you know, in the West, we're used to having exclusivistic religions. You know, Muslims aren't usually Mormons, and Baptists usually aren't, ba- aren't usually Buddhists. And, you know, you're, you're kind of one thing or another for, in, in most of the West. Mm-hmm. And in the ancient world, it was never that way. If you worship Zeus, you could also worship Apollo. And if you worship the two of them, you could also worship Athena. And you could, you, so if you started worshiping a new god, you just added it on to the old gods. And uh, Christianity was about the only religion saying, no, you can't do that. If you worship our god, it's the only god. You uh, can't worship any of the others. Bart, in the early days of Christianity, was Christianity sort of more, oh, I don't, I'm probably not going to say this right, but was it more uh, Jewy? <laughs> no, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so uh, Jesus himself was a Jew, and his followers were Jews, and they, they kept the Jewish law, and they followed Jewish customs, and they, they worshipped the Jewish God, and they revered the Jewish scripture. They were Jewish. And so the, the, big, the big step in Christianity is when the Apostle Paul came along and realized that belief in Jesus' death and resurrection worked for salvation for everyone, whether they're Jewish or Gentile, Mm -hmm. uh, so that a Gentile who converted didn't have to become Jewish, which meant that if they were a man, they didn't have to get circumcised, and men or or women, they didn't have to keep kosher or follow the Sabbath or, or any of the Jewish customs. And so this opened up the possibility of Christianity becoming a worldwide religion. And so what I argue in my book is that this is the biggest transformation in the history of Christianity, uh, because otherwise, if it hadn't happened, Christianity would have been, would have been a Jewish sect that, that nobody today would have ever heard of. Okay, so what I just heard you say was, one of the reasons Christianity took over is because, especially within the, the Jewish population, is because they said, you know what, guys? We can relax a little on the rules. Let's just relax a little. Let's relax on that you got to do this, and then this day you got to do that, and let's let's just chill with all that stuff. Bacon. That, well, you, like bacon, yeah, they, for well, example. Bacon with, was the number one reason Christianity took over the world, because you could start yeah. eating bacon. Mm. Yeah, well, and shrimp cocktail. I mean, there are all sorts of things. <laughs> but, you but, but, you know, they weren't relaxing the ethical rules, but they were relaxing the idea that you have to follow the, the things that make Jews Jewish, which are, you know, like circumcision and kosher food laws and such. Right, right. Okay. Uh, my assistant, my assistant, it sounds <laughs> sounds very Vanna Whiteish. Can you turn a letter, please, Tim? Yes. Uh, Tim needs to say something, because he's, he's actually quite interested in this part of the show. Usually he doesn't listen. So no, I don't. No. no. Um, you mentioned how uh, the state was connected to religion and not separated like we do in the West. Was that uh, a good thing or a bad thing ultimately for Christianity? This is more of, I guess, a, a faith. Is qu- it's kind of like, you know, when there, all the cool music is underground, but the second it becomes popular, it's not cool anymore and it loses something. Did what Christian- the heck are you talking did about? Did Christianity lose legitimacy when it became the state religion? Oh. Yeah, so let me, yeah, so let me say a couple things about that. I mean, the, the interesting thing is that the, the early Christians, before the empires, emperors became Christian, the earliest Christians argued for a separation of church and state. 
uh, because the, the state was sometimes persecuting them. And Christians said, look, you know, the government should let us worship whoever you want. There shouldn't be governmental interference in our religion. And so they wanted a separation of church and state. And they held that view until the emperor became a Christian. And when the emperor became a Christian, then they gave up on this idea of separation of church and state, and they wanted the state then to suppress all the other religions. And so, uh, and so they, you know, they, they went back on their, their own rhetoric once it was convenient for them. But the question, you know, was, was it better or worse? Uh, people have had different opinions. I mean, some people have said, look, uh, if that hadn't happened, Christianity would never have taken over the West. And other people say, yeah, but it, it became very different then, because now you've got a state-supported religion, and it's just not the same thing, and it kind of loses its value as a kind of a, a countercultural movement. And so there's no, you know, there's no way to say, you know, as a historian, that it, it was better or worse, but it certainly changed things. We're chatting with uh, Bart Ehrman. Are we saying, is it Ehrman or Ehrman? Uh, people say both. I usually say Ehrman. Ehrman. I thought, yeah, I thought I heard Ehrman. Bart D. Ehrman. Uh, he's the author of The Triumph of Christianity, How a Forbidden Religion Swept the World. I think just the fact that it was forbidden is also tantalizing, would it not be? Although back then, it's not the same as being forbidden here. Like, forbidden here means, dude, let's do an underground club. But forbidden back then meant your head got chopped off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so the uh, I, I devote a chapter in the book to the question of the Christian persecutions back b before the emperor converted. Um and people have mistaken ideas about this. A lot of people think that Christianity was always illegal and that you couldn't be a Christian without you know, being thrown to the lions and that you're always being persecuted. And that's actually not true. Christians, Christians were persecuted on occasion, but the, the persecutions were sporadic and uh, they were occasional, they were localized, there were never any empire-wide persecutions for the first 200 years of Christianity. Uh, but when you get into the middle of the 3rd century and then the beginning of the 4th century, there was a decided effort to stamp out the religion, and uh, there, there began to be severe persecutions. And it, it was at that point, in the early 4th century, it became illegal, basically, to be a Christian. But then, during this great persecution that's going on in the early 4th century, is precisely when the Emperor Constantine converted. <laughs> and so that, that radically changed everything at that point. Well, yeah, I mean, that's like... Uh... That's like you two being a Christian band. That that helped us sell Jesus a lot, right? <laughs> yeah, and it would you know, yeah, it would certainly changed the clientele. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, Constantine yeah, yeah. buys into Christianity, and next thing you know, there's you know, what would Constantine do? Shirts going around the. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, Bart. I I gotta ask you about conversion tactics. You know, um, yeah. how, how did Christians? do the conversion did they do flirt and convert like they do in a lot of um, youth groups here did they have yeah, yeah, yeah. what we would jesus do seat, we used to call that backseat evangelism there you go <laughs> there you go where you laid hands on yeah i got it i praying got it in tongues. Yeah, right, praying in tongues tongues. yeah the whole thing um yeah was what did they have any conversion tactics uh they did and so this is another chapter in my book is how they went about doing it uh what I argue is that um, there were not any major evangelistic rallies or uh, public air sorts of events. It was all word of mouth. Uh, and what people did is they convinced these pagans that the Christian God was more powerful than their gods. And so the, the logic of this is, uh, has to do with why people were, were religious at all in the ancient world. And most people were religious not because of an afterlife. A, a lot of people didn't believe in an afterlife. But they did think that they needed the help of the gods just to survive this life. So the gods can make it rain, but, you know, you can't. And the, the gods can make the crops grow, and they make the livestock reproduce, and they can, they can heal you if you're sick. The, the gods can do all sorts of things and it's all about divine power and accessing that power. Christians told stories about how their God did miracles, and his miracles were better than the pagan miracles. And so they, they didn't have to convince thousands of people at once, but if they're convincing one person at a time over a stretch of a long period, then they're taking that person away from paganism, putting them into Christianity, so that Christianity is growing and the other religions are disappearing. Okay, so I guess what I want to know directly and, and succinctly, Bart, is did the massive spreading of Christianity around the world, does that give any pause for thought? Did, like, in other words, you sit there and you go, whoa, it, that must be something to that religion because of the way it spread around the world. 
Well, I don't know. I mean, would you, you know, if if you live in the Middle East and you say Islam took over our country, would you say therefore Islam is true? In other words, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Know, there, it's all contextual. There, yeah. there, 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 are, there are 7 billion people in the world today, and only 2 billion of them are Christian. Mm-hmm. And so if it's, you know, if it's proving that it's divinely true and that, you know, somehow this is God, uh, God doing his work so that people will convert, you know, then why is most of the world not converted? Or just in terms of the Roman Empire, you know, if God was doing it, why, why did it take 400 years before the emperor? I mean, so, so I think um, probably appealing to divine causality isn't going to get you very far. No, no, no. no. That's, I, I like the answer. I, like, I, I concur. Um, <laughs> okay, so let's, let's finish with this. What is in your, because I know, Bart, that you've, you've got your eyes wide open on all this stuff. What is the number one thing about Christianity's spread around the world that you think ultimately became a benefit to the world? Well, I think there was a lot of good that came of it. I mean, I'm not myself a, a Christian, and so it's not that you know, it's not that I'm in favor of yeah. you know Christianity. So, uh, so, uh, but I'll tell you, I mean, one of the things I emphasize in the book is that we we owe our entire cultural heritage to this triumph. Uh, as you were saying earlier, I mean, you just look at art or literature or music or philosophy, what we think of as the greats in all of these fields. I mean, think, think about art. I mean, the, the art from the Middle Ages down to the, uh, to the Renaissance, down to the modern period, I mean, it's religious art, and it's Christian art. And the, the musicians, the composers we've had, the literary authors we've had, the philosophers, none of that is possible without Christianity. So we would have had other artists and other musicians and other art, other authors and so on. They, they would have been different. They would have been incalculably different mm-hmm. from what we – what we they, they would have existed, but they would have been different. And so, you know, if we cherish our cultural heritage, as most of us do, then, uh, well, you know, if, if it weren't for Christianity, if we wouldn't have had what we, what we had. Bart, I really appreciate your work, I, and I'm also quite thankful that I have listeners that dig your stuff, too, because that means I'm heading the right direction. So thank you for doing what you do. Bart D. Ehrman, he is the author of uh, Ehrman, he's the author of The Triumph of Christianity, How a Forbidden Religion Swept the World. The website is Bart D. E-H-R-M-A-N, Bart D. Ehrman dot com. And uh, happy Easter, Bart D. Yeah, Ehrman. yeah, you too. Yeah. Always good Thanks. to have you on the show, sir. Always. Thanks. Always good to be on it. Thanks. Okay. Bye-bye.